call to order the regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Victorville. City Council sitting at the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, Victorville Redevelopment Agency, and the Victorville Water District. And I'll entertain a motion going to closed session. Uh, Carrie for the record, the closed session items are all fully listed on the agenda uh, with the uh, specific parties in connection with the real estate negotiations and the properties involved and uh, the potential litigation as well. That's, yeah, too long. Lousy cold, too. I know. Numbers it didn't stop me from drinking my Myers and Coke. I would like to reconvene the meetings of the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, Victorville Redevelopment Agency, Victorville Water District, and City Council of the City of Victorville. And do we have any reportable action? Uh, Mayor Cabrales, no, we do not have any reportable action as a result of the, uh, the prior closed sessions, which will fully agenda action. Thank you. At this time, we will have the invocation. That will be by Father Tom Lander from the Holy Innocence Church in here in Victorville. That will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by our police chief, Captain Reynolds. Good evening. As we begin this session, I believe it appropriate to pray to ask for the gift of wisdom. Wisdom, also called prudence or right judgment, is that which allows us to perform our duties with direction and in good conscience. God, creator, a source of all good, we ask for your blessing upon all who gather here, that they may be given your gift of living wisdom to guide and to govern, to act with justice and compassion. Attributed to King Solomon, we hear of his prayer in the Book of Wisdom. Therefore I prayed and understanding was given me. I called upon God and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepters and thrones, and I accounted wealth as nothing in comparison with her. Neither did I liken her any priceless gem, because all gold is but a little sand in her sight and silver will be accounted as clay before her. I loved her more than health and beauty, and I chose to have her rather than light, because her radiance never ceases. All good things came to me along with her, and her hands uncounted wealth. I rejoiced in them all, because wisdom leads them, but I did not know that she was their mother. Lord, we offer to you this prayer for those gathered here who ask for the same gift. May your servants respond with their minds and hearts so that your will be done. Amen. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible.
I now have the honor of uh, recognizing our military through our military banner program. And tonight we are here to recognize Mario Medina with the United States Marine Corps. I would like his family to come forward, please, and receive a certificate from the city of Victorville. As you know, when Mario returns back to Victorville, we will present him with the uh, banner recognizing his service to this country. Would like to, this is a certificate saluting Mario Medina for, thank, uh, for serving his country. And we'd like to thank Mario as well as the families for their support and their sacrifice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Um, on behalf of my family, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Mayor and the council members, for uh, honoring my son, our son. Um, it's been difficult, but he's, he's going to get through it, and uh, we just appreciate everyone's prayers and, and support here at home, and, and uh, they really need that right now. And um, I would just, I, I'd just like to say that um, Mario is... is uh, a great son. He's a, a great uh, American. He loves his country, and um, it's just an honor for him to serve his country. And it, it, ever since he was, uh, uh, I, I think what really happened is, is when he was 14, when September 11th happened, and before that, he'd always been interested in the military with, with myself serving, my father serving, and my grandfather serving in World War II. And we always talked about our, our time in the service, and uh, but I think on September 11th, when he was 14 years old, you know, I, I think something uh, inside of him just really um, gave him that determination uh, to to want to be a part of something bigger than himself. And um, we're so proud of him. We love him. Um, we miss him. And uh, his wife, Kim, will... Sure, yeah, absolutely. This is my wife, Diana. Uh, my granddaughter, Mariah. Mario's wife, Kim who will be leaving uh, for Iraq but in, uh, when Mario gets back, actually, probably have to do a tour in Iraq. My daughter, Casey, Nia, and Angel, my daughters. Um, so, yeah, we're just, we're just proud of him. Uh, we, we love him. We miss him. We miss all of them. We pray for them every day, and uh, we know he's going to come home safe. And so thank you very much for this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We also have two presentations. Uh, one is by Ben Tafoya from our local Rotary Club. Thank you. Um, you know, as with uh, disasters and in this particular one, the uh, Hurricane uh, Jimena that hit uh, Baja, Mexico, and uh, again, the fire department of uh, Victorville came through with flying colors. And I have two certificates here for each of the uh, fire departments that allowed us to have their department as a staging area for the uh, medical supplies that we had to take to uh, Baja, Mexico. Um, the, the area over there... The area that was in need... And, and brought two of them, one for each of the uh, the two areas that we used to uh, awesome. to store uh, the supplies. And uh, what we did is picked up all the supplies there, and the Baja push pilots, as you know, mm -hmm. were able to take them down to the folks that were in need. So, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ben, and thank the Rotary Club and our fire department. Next, I have a presentation by Keith Peterson, Battalion Chief with San Bernardino County Fire, uh, Victorville Division.
Hello, Mayor, members of the council. Thanks for this opportunity. Um, on his fourth day uh, of the old fire, the fire which burned over 993 homes in San Bernardino in 2003, Victorville Fire Captain Vance Caswell asked to be replaced due to his incessant and increasing abdominal pain. Vance later was diagnosed with cancer. Captain Caswell worked valiantly during the next few months with the Victorville Fire Department. He had started cancer treatments and began feeling the effects of chemo. Reluctantly, Vance had to retire uh, due to the quickly spreading cancer. He died August 1st, 2005. Vance had worked 28 years with the Victorville Fire Department. This past Saturday, I was honored to uh, accompany firefighters from across the state of California to attend a firefighter memorial held at our, nation, at our state's capital. Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger delivered a vibrant speech about the duties and sacrifices of our firefighters. Vance's wife, Mary, <clears throat> and 12-year-old daughter, Abigail, were there. They're living in Fortuna, California, and doing well. Vance's son was there. Uh, Vance's son, Bill, was there to accept a memorial flag in uh, his father's honor. The flag was presented by our own Greg Kuhn. Bill's a career firefighter with the Las Vegas Fire Department. Uh, Captain Caswell will be forever remembered with his inscription, with the inscription of his name on the brushed limestone walls of the firefighter memorial at our state's capital in Sacramento. Here's a picture of Bill and I at the memorial in Sacramento. Thank you. We will now begin with the uh, agendas. We have first the Library Board of Trustees. We don't have any revisions. And we have the consent calendar. Move approval. Second. Councilman Caldwell, I need a vote. Consent calendar. Public comment. I believe we need to do public comment if you're going to start the, the meeting with the public comment. Just for the uh, Southern California logistics? Uh, the rail authority would be the next agenda. Okay, so we have Southern California logistics rail authority and Southern California logistics airport authority, and both of these will, uh, will be chaired by uh, uh, the chairman of the authority, uh, Mr. Caldwell. Thank you, Mayor Carabialis, but I think uh, as you normally handle it, you do all the public comment uh, at one time. Uh, I, I stand corrected. We do have uh, public comment, and I would like to uh, invite anybody who wants to uh, speak to any issue that's not on the agenda, it will step to the podium or come up to the podium. You have three minutes. Uh, anyone that wishes to address the council on any issue, not on the agenda. Please come forward. We've got several topics my neighbors to cover, and maybe they're too many and too complicated or what have you. Handle generally speaking, and you're probably all aware of, of the similar topics, and I'm really concerned as to what really is going on. My name is Art Loya. I live here about five blocks away from here, off of El uh, I've seen my home value just crash 
and I'm sure you're all aware and everybody else is aware of it. I've seen it. I stopped counting at 40 homes that were vacated here just probably seven, eight months, nine months ago or so. I guess through foreclosure and the yards and the upkeep of all those homes seem to just crash with it. I'm wondering what is going on with the city. I've called a number of times. I gave a list, list of about 12, 13 homes that just were not being maintained. And even now it's got to a point to those that seem like they're occupied by maybe the prior tenants or what have you, or prior owners. Even those homes now seem to be dropping in upkeep. And I understand that you sent several letters to the owners who they might be, the banks, the owners, the renters, wherever they all are, and they're supposed to start uh, doing some, something other than zero. And, and, but the matter seems to be getting worse. More and more yards are getting just, just look like Dickens. Behind me, there's a home, a car been parked on the grass for about the best, best, the best part of three months. I call about that, and as best I can tell, I don't even know if anybody even lives there, but I know someone has been occupying the pool. I call about that. I don't know if it's the prior owners had the key, or I don't know what's going on, but it's pretty darn well confusing. Also, the fact that nothing seems to be going down, and I can see nothing but Home value just going down to Dickens. I've noticed that there are more homes are occupied now. Apparently they're by renters. I don't know who is, who's occupying them. But they don't seem to be giving a damn either about upkeep of the homes. Consequently, I see the neighborhood going to Dickens even faster, and I'm not sure what it's going to take to get going. I mean, it seems like that maybe, I know we haven't got the manpower, the money, what have you at all, to address all these things. I guess quickly, apparently we don't have. At any rate, maybe a volunteer group of some citizens or whatever, for whatever it's worth, uh, but I mean, calling in, I thought there might be something happening. And this just irks me to no end to see this home behind me with the car and the grass growing up all around it behind me, still there. Uh, and like I say, there again, I don't even know if somebody lives there. You have 15 seconds left, sir. Pardon? You have 15 seconds left. Okay. That's my primary gripe besides just graffiti is my most, my other situation that probably has to be addressed even more stringently and there again you might have to have some volunteers involved there but uh it seemed like the town's going to dickens where do we stop where do we stop crashing that's my primary concern where does it all end i mean is this going to be a slum land or what i don't know if you'll give your card to the to the city clerk please so we can contact you at any rate, that's the best part of what I can say about what's going on. Thank you. Public comment is now closed. We'll now go into the Southern California Logistics Rail Authority and the Southern California Logistics Airport Authority agenda. Thank you, Mayor Cabrales. As to the rail authority, there are no revisions. The only item would be uh, item three, the consent calendar. Move for approval. Very good. That concludes the rail authority agenda. As to the airport authority agenda, again, there are no revisions or add-ons that I'm aware of. Uh, item three is the consent calendar. A motion would be in order. A move. Second. Okay. Item four is a request to rescind the previous action of August 18th, which approved a $1.7 million loan with Millionaire. You have the staff materials that uh, explain the reason for this item. Questions or comments? Move no for approval. Item five, request to approve a loan agreement uh, between the regional center one LP in the Southern California Logistics Airport Authority. For approval. Is there a second? Second. I did. Oh, maybe I didn't click it hard enough. Item six is the new agreement, professional services agreement with Mr. Jim Morsham, who has been 
involved with the city for a great number of years in developing the Southern California Logistics uh, Airport. And this agreement has been uh, requested to the Victorville City Council, sitting as the airport authority. Staff has worked through this process with Mr. Warsham. Mr. Warsham's here. Glad you have recuperated successfully from your surgery and that you're back ready to go to work. Questions or comments about the professional services agreement with Mr. Warsham? Not a motion would be in order. Um, we had a correction. Mr. Chairman, if I might, before making uh, the motion, uh, there is one item that I would like to bring to the attention uh, of the board. This was a matter that uh, Mayor Cabriales brought to my attention, and I concurred with his assessment, uh, which requires a minor change uh, to the agreement. Um, if I could bring your attention to uh, page 83 of your agenda, uh, there was ambiguity determined with respect to uh, paragraph A under section 3. And I th what I would be asking you to do is um, modify the uh, allow me to modify the recommendation and have the board approve uh, my recommendation where this agreement be approved subject to the striking of the very last sentence of paragraph A under section 3, uh, the paragraph reading ground lease revenues generated in, 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 in excess of $150,000 shall be split 50-50. You discussed that revision with Mr. Warshaw? I have. I did have a telephone conference uh, with him this afternoon, and he's uh, in agreement. Questions or comments with that to revision? Not a motion is in order. For approval. Second. Item 7 is a request to approve change order 1 to Butsco Utility Design, an amount not to exceed $46,180 for additional services on the design and coordination of the SCLA Eastside Dry Utility System. Questions or comments? Motion would be in order. Move for approval. Second. Item 8 is proposed resolution SCLAA 09005, which, if adopted, uh, would approve a loan agreement between the Victorville Redevelopment Agency and the Southern California Logistics Airport Authority. Questions or comments? Motion would be in order. For approval. Yeah. And that concludes the Airport Authority agenda. We'll now go to the uh, redevelopment agency agenda. Uh, there are no revisions. Uh, we have the consent calendar. Move approval. Item number four, the request to affirm the authorization to execute the purchase agreement for NSP acquisition for real property, to approve the appropriation from the neighborhood stabilization program fiscal year 2008-2009 funds in the amount of $450,898 for the purchase and other associated costs to acquire the property, $200,000 for the rehab and resale of the properties and three designate the director of economic development as the authorized signer of all related transactions and documents. Move for approval. Second. Item number five is a request to adopt resolution number R09011 entitled Resolution of the Board of Directors of the Victorville Redevelopment Agency approving loan agreement by and between the Victorville Redevelopment Agency and the Southern California Logistics Airport Authority. To approval. Second. Victorville Water District, there are no revisions. Uh, consent calendar, item number three. Move for approval.
Item number four is the request to adopt resolution number BWD09012, entitled A Resolution of the Victorville Water District Amending Section 3 of Resolution B681-00, uh, accepting the, uh, the proposition 13 grand designated in project director to be Victorville Water District's representative for the administration of the project and liaison for with the uh, Department of Water Resources for submission of required documents. For approval. Second. <laughs> Item number five, request to approve annual purchase order request for performance meter Inc. for the purchase of water meters for fiscal year 2009-2010. Move for approval. Second. Item number six, request to approve the purchase of two uh, temporary assignments of free production allowances for the 2008-2009 water year for Macro Capital Management Limited Partnership. For approval. Second. We now go to the uh, City Council agenda. There are no revisions. We do have a public hearing, item number three, and I will have uh, Mr. Bill Webb address the Council on item number three. Yes, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council members. Uh, if I may, I'd like to give a brief presentation um, through a slideshow. And just to refresh, thank you, just to refresh uh, the Council um, or the recollection, on September 15th, the City Council denied case number uh, DEV 904, which included the first comprehensive update of planning and building fees since 1991. That was based upon, and the, the fees were based upon the Maximus fee study. The fee study compared the cost of processing all planning and building requests to the fees received and found that the costs were almost twice the amount of fees received for fiscal year 2006 and 2007. As you can see there, the fee revenue for our department was th approximately 3,200,000. The cost of services, uh, of st and that's basically st staffing, it's primarily staffing. And um, it's according to, it was, the study was done not according to the amount of people that we had, but the amount of hours spent on each aspect of a certain project and type of project, <coughs> including uh, minimum amounts as you go up the ladder to city administration, say uh, finance or uh, IS assistance, anything of that sort was all calculated in. And the cost of services was almost six million, which meant that there was a cost to the general fund of almost three million dollars for that year. So basically since 1991, I would guess we have been subsidizing development anywhere between the minimal, well, when the fees were adjusted, between zero and it slowly climbed up to 45%. Understanding that there will always be some subsidizing for services provided by the city, um, we didn't believe it was the council's intent to, to subsidize almost half of development costs through the general fund. So we came forward um, with recommendations for fees which were comparable but lower than the surrounding cities, um, but quite an adjustment for for the city of Victorville. At that meeting, council directed staff to return with a revised proposal that took into account the current economy, suggesting incorporation of, number one, a deferred implementation, number two, retention of some of the existing fees, however, three, restraint used in, in the increasing of other fees. Um, so closer analysis and also uh, council was pleased with the inclusion of the annual cost of living adjustment that was proposed. All of these things were intermingled into, into one ordinance and one resolution, I believe. 
Uh, so therefore, tonight before you is a series of resolutions and ordinances that staff believes accomplishes all of these uh, requests, separates them out, and simplifies, simplifies the issue. As you can see, the, the staff report, as well as the exhibits and the attachments, are divided into six pieces. Uh, two sections. Number one is the building section. Number two is the zoning section. Each of those consisting of three zoning or, or three ordinances or resolutions. To start with, the very first building resolution proposed um, is just a request of staff for the council to officially direct me to postpone the code required valuation adjustments um, currently required by the code until July 1st of 2010. Maintaining the current building fees for all new construction, tenant improvements, and, and additions. Item number two is an ordinance that, prov that provides, uh, changes the code and provides for the adoption of a tiered fee schedule for grading, plumbing, mechanical, electrical, and miscellaneous building permits that takes into account the economy of scale of a project which will be explained further in the next slide, um, and also establishes a mechanism that adjusts the fee schedule annually based upon the cost of living index beginning July 1st. It is based upon the cost of living index, however, the text actually reads um, salary adjustments based upon the cost of living index. Since the fee study was done in, uh, based upon, was prepared based upon staff salaries, it only makes sense that if staff salaries either increase or decrease, that we have the ability to either increase or decrease fees, and that's the, that, that wouldn't be legally challenged uh, since there's a direct nexus between the study and the salaries of staff. Item three under building is a resolution. The last resolution is uh, adopts the tiered schedule, uh, uh, adopts the actual fee schedule for grading, plumbing, mechanical, electrical, and miscellaneous building permits. It differentiates between new construction and standalone. This is the economy of scale that we discussed. And what we did differently than the last time is what we brought back all of those individual, uh, several pages of, of building fees for anything from forced air heating, uh, heating and air conditioning to a plumbing fixture, a toilet, electrical permit, any of those things, and said, when we go out to a construction site for a new development, well, actually, when we plan check a new home or a new, or a new commercial building, we are, we are studying all of those things together in one sitting. When we go out to a site visit, we're inspecting numerous aspects of that job. Therefore, we're, we're recommending that we keep the existing rates, the current rates for all of those permits um, for all new construction, room additions and, TI, and uh, additions and tenant improvements. However, for standalone projects, where we are called out specifically for central heating and air conditioning, that a, I don't know what it is, but 20 to $60 fee is not sufficient. We are recommending the, the adopted fees, the proposed fees, which are lower than the, than the fee study and in keeping and or lower than neighboring cities. And that will help recover some of the cost for the individual plan check for that item or those few items and the numerous chip, uh, uh, inspections and trips out to the site. So therefore, there's tiered for new construction versus standalone. And that's different from the last time. The other thing that we have done is we're recommending a deferral on, on this taking effect until July 1st, 2010. The planning, the first item is an ordinance that establishes a zoning administrator. The zoning administrator will have the authority to approve minor entitlements for existing developments, such as site plans, conditional use permits, and variances. This requires no additional staff it streamlines the planning process and reduces costs and fees. The second ordinance provides for a tiered adopt, uh, the adoption of a tiered planning fee schedule by resolution. It also establishes a mechanism that adjusts the fee schedule annu annually based upon the cost of living index beginning July 1st, 2010. And last and under zoning is a resolution that adopts engineering plan check fees and a tiered planning fee schedule that keeps the zoning administrator cases at current rates and ensures better cost recovery for other cases while remaining comparable to surrounding cities. This also we're requesting is deferred until July 1st, 2010. Briefly to, to explain further on the zoning administrator, since those cases either do not require a public hearing or can have a public hearing um, back in a conference room, 
without the planning commission, without staff staying late, without IT staff having to work, having to work the computers, et cetera. We can have those in the afternoon. Those generally just require notifying the immediate neighbors. And those are, as you know, many of our cases, numerous or the majority of our cases, mom and pop shops, the local residents, are site plans for a room addition to their home, are a CUP for a restaurant getting an alcohol license. There's typically not any, um, excuse me, um, uh, not any complaints uh, from or not anybody speaking in opposition to those. Those can be processed at a lower rate. Therefore, we are proposing for all of those cases under the, uh, for those cases that they continue at the current rates of, I believe it's 300 for a CUP and 400 for a site plan. It's listed in there. Well, well, um, well, the ones that require a public hearing come closer to recovering the, the, uh, the actual cost of a proposal. Now, all of the fees that we propose, we do not have the ability to calculate how much closer that will bring us to cost recovery. I can tell you, guessing wise, it, it may bring us about halfway closer. At least we will probably be um, subsidizing approximately 25% rather than 45% of development with the approval of these fees. Obviously, we would have to take the fee studies recommendation, which is almost twice what we're recommending um, for those fees that are increasing in order to recover all costs. And, and due to the, the direction of council, I don't think that was the, the direction that we had um, to go forward and, and attempt to recover all costs. And um, with that, that concludes this. I want to make two things clear for, for everybody. And that, uh, once again, this does not involve diff fees has nothing to do with diff fees. It's completely separate. This is cost recovery for the work done by the employees of the city on all planning and, and uh, building projects. And second, it is not a tax. Again, it's recovery fee for services rendered. We're not proposing 100% recovery. We're proposing at best probably about 75% recovery rather than the 55% that we have right, right at this time. Everything mentioned tonight, is written to be deferred and take effect on July 1st, 2010. And that concludes that concludes the presentation. Thank you. Any questions? Well, I don't have a question about the specific um, presentation tonight. I think it's a it's a, it's a sound presentation, and I uh, I feel comfortable with it. But I, I guess I have a philosophical question, and that is, while it's easy in today's environment economic situation that we're in and and specifically the development and construction aspects which has always been a huge part of this city's economy keeping the recovery uh, low and deferring it as you've said results in essence in a subsidy I think at some point this council ought to know at least an order of magnitude of what that subsidy is um, it's a very abstract, uh, very nebulous thing that we're talking about. We know that the subsidy has to come from somewhere. Presumably it comes from the general fund. Uh, you know, the general fund supports police and fire and parks and, and, and things that make the quality of life very important. I'm all in favor of what's been proposed. I don't want you to uh, in infer differently. And I know you've got a lot of things to do, but at some point, in the reasonably near future, I would like to see us try to quantify uh, order of magnitude of the subsidy from the general fund for this approach. As, as stated, and I, I know you're asking for something in the future, as stated, we do have it for one year, and, and that approach close to $3 million, which was, which was half of what, what we took in that year. 06, 07, I would say, was, a, was an above average year. Um, I would guess, this sounds odd, but I would guess it probably cost, by the way, having, having already decreased our staff in our department by, by one third. Um, it's not because we're, we're, we're fat, we're, we've got too many staff, but I would guess that it probably even costs more during slow economic times um, than it does when we were quickly paced. Does anything else, when you have, when you have a bunch of stock plans, you can race through them. When you do it daily, it's something that becomes it's something that becomes naturally to, natural to you. Um, when you reach the bottom of the barrel, like we have in development over the last year, year and a half, we're dealing with difficult projects. 
They take a lot longer to look at the grading. They take, there, there are lots that nobody would have developed in, during good times. Um, there, there are uh, projects that probably wouldn't have been feasible during good times. Uh, it takes a lot more analysis before the planning commission. So the cost that I gave you there, 45% during a good year, it probably is a higher rate that we're subsidizing during the bad years. Lower number, but higher rate. Uh, and, and I know that doesn't quantify, but, but I know that as a fact, being on the floor, to be, to be true. Well, and, and, and that makes sense to me, Bill. I, 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 don't, I don't want you to spend an inordinate amount of time trying to, to refine the number, but it's one thing to talk about 25 percent or 75 percent or 45 percent, but I think it would be useful from a public right. policy standpoint to put some estimated dollars with that, because whatever the dollars are, they are shifts from uh, other funding sources that are used right. for, for other aspects of municipal government. I just, I feel better knowing roughly what those numbers are. Right. We'll do that. No problem. Thank you. Item number three is a public hearing called to hear arguments for or against the introduction of ordinances number 2249, 2250, and 2251, and the adoption of resolutions numbers 09091, 09092, and 09093. This is regarding code, uh, code amendments, titles 15 and 18, building and zoning, case number uh, development 09009. I will now call the public, public hearing to order. And the first one is uh, Jim Tatum. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Senate Councilman, my name is Jim Tatum. And when I read about this coming up in the paper, naturally I got concerned about it. The first thing I did was pick up the phone and call Bill and said, hey, wait a minute. You know, we need to talk about what's going on because we can't take a fee increase at this time. We're not, nobody has any production going on out there at all. And I thought we had some kind of a deal worked out in the city where we were going to take those and set them aside for a certain period of time. So Bill met with me and we went over in detail what he talked about tonight. And I would concur with uh, everything that he has there. It's not going to be a big impact on the residential builders. It has to do more with some of the planning maps and uh, those items that he probably is not getting enough money for anyway. And so I, for one, would like to support this, knowing that I'll be back on July the 10th to ask for an extension. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just so get ready, but I will support this tonight, okay? That's under record. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone wishing to speak for or against item three? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. And I would ask our attorney, do we take the resolutions first and then the ordinance one at a time? Or can we just yes, you could take uh, all three resolutions and adopt with one motion. The ordinances need to be read, and you need to have a motion to waive further reading on each one of the ordinances. Okay. I would like to have a motion to adopt resolution number 09091, resolution number 09092, and resolution number 09093. Move. Second. Item B is uh, ordinance number 2249, and we'd like to read the title. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Victorville amending and or deleting various sections of Title 15 of the Victorville Municipal Code relating to grading, plumbing, mechanical, electrical, and miscellaneous building fees, effective July 1, 2010, City of Victorville. Wait for the reading. Second. And that would include introduction. An introduction. Item D, ordinance number 2250, 
an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Victorville amending and or deleting various sections of Title 18 of the Victorville Municipal Code in order to establish the authority of a zoning administrator over minor planning projects, effective July 1, 2010, City of Victorville. Move way further reading and introduction. Item E, ordinance number 2251. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Victorville amending and or deleting various sections of Title 18 of the Victorville Municipal Code relating to planning fees effective July 1, 2010, City of Victorville. Move way further reading and introduction. Number four, it's a cons consent calendar. Move for approval. Number five, request to award a contract to VCI construction in the amount of $1,499,270.28 for construction of the East Side Dry Utility and Water Improvements. Move authorization. Number six, request to approve the amended, restated, exclusive franchise agreement between the City of Victorville and Vertec Waste Industries, Inc. Move for approval. Second. I'd like to speak to the motion. I just want to comment that years and years and years ago, I hate to think how far back, so far back that Mr. Cox had not yet retired. To, <laughs> either for the first or the second time. Um, it was approaching a campaign period, and my campaign committee convinced me to spend a substantial sum of money to do a professional survey with regard to the city of Victorville. And a series of the questions dealt with the things in the city that were most disliked and the things in the city that were most liked. And I saved that study, and I gave that study uh, to the city, and it's around here in the archives somewhere. The most phenomenal thing about that study was that the thing that was most admired by the residents of the city of Victorville, the thing that was most appreciated, was the quality and consistency of the trash pickup service in the city of Victorville. That's got to be at least 20 years ago, maybe 25. Today, it's no different. I haven't done a formal study, although I'm probably getting ready to do one. But, I, you know, I am amazed. You know, it, it makes no difference what it is that we do in this city, from picking up stray dogs to sweeping the streets or whatever. You do get an occasional complaint. I don't get any complaints about the service that you, that Burtek, uh, renders to the residents of the city of Victorville. I think that's a tremendous accomplishment. Uh, you keep the people happy, which means they're not complaining to us. And I just want you to know that uh, as a member of the council, I'm very appreciative of the fact that you do the quality of job that you do. I have no problem uh, voting to uh, give you the exclusive franchise agreement that's before us tonight. Well, you know, you're absolutely correct. The, the, the service is great, but beyond that, you're great community partners. Uh, and that's, uh, that's very important uh, to the service clubs, to organizations that, 
that count on contributions and sponsorships, and we appreciate what you do for the community. Thank you. Item seven is presentation report from council members. Uh, I have three issues, Mayor. Uh, the first one was I, I had read in the paper today uh, that there would be a presentation of a, a EB-5 uh, investment. I read the paper. I thought it said today. Um, it was on, quoted on it. Was it a consent item? Well, no, it was, it was under the... Uh, uh, Southern Gale, uh, All right. Well, then I was as, I was asleep at the switch on that. Um, the EB five is that with the limited partnership with. Uh, well, maybe that's how it skipped over me then. But I, I did want to comment also that the reference in the paper that the five hundred dollar five hundred thousand dollar investment resulted in citizenship that simply is not true, Brooke. I, I don't know where you got that information. It's never been discussed or packaged that way. You have a chance if you could talk to Keith Metzler, uh, who is responsible for that program. It does not result in, in citizenship. It results initially in a conditional visa, which is a long way from citizenship and may not ever ripen into citizenship. So I just wanted to uh, ask you to get with Keith and get that straight, or get with Inland, as the case may be. Second item I would like to mention is that uh, I went to a presentation today, a Chamber of Commerce presentation, economic forum, and, and I wish some members of the council and some members of the staff and some members of the planning commission uh, could have found time to go to it. It was an excellent, excellent uh, presentation. There were four presenters, all dealt with energy development, primarily uh, in the high desert, although the presentations from BLM uh, had a lot of statistics for other parts of the county. Uh, well as Riverside County. It was, it was really quite surprising to hear the BLM side of it and to hear the county side of it. And it's much more uh, extensive and much more intensive uh, than one might realize. All of the presenters, the BLM, uh, Abengoa, uh, the county, and the wind uh, company, I can't think of the name of it, all had excellent slide presentations to support what they had to share today. Um, I would ask that our staff contact the chamber and or those individual people and see if we could get copies of those slide presentations because it is uh, going to have a huge impact on the growth and development of this city. It's going to have a huge impact on the planning department and what Bill Webb and his folks uh, have to do and the revenue generation for that which will be developed in the city uh, in terms of tax monies is huge. I mean, we're talking numbers uh, in, the, in the billions of dollars. And uh, it's a wealth of information. It comes from credible sources. And again, I know our staff has a million and one things on their plate to do, but I think getting copies of that information and analyzing it as it specifically uh, impacts the city of Victorville would be to our long-term advantage. And the last thing I want to mention is that, uh, as happens every year, uh, Mr. Cox finally attains the same age that I have attained. He is now as old as I am. And I don't know whether the council would be excited about singing happy birthday uh, to Mr. Cox. No, no, no. no. I, I certainly am not happy about the prospect of hearing it. Uh, but I, I, th I think it important that we acknowledge that Mr. Cox has reached a milestone in his life that uh, is uh, phenomenal. I've known him for 50 years. I never thought he'd make it this far. But uh, <laughs> congratulations, Mr. Cox, uh, on a job well done. Thank you. That's all I have. Uh, no, I have nothing. Well, I'm two years older than Mr. Cox. <laughs> and, and I remember when I came here, I was 38. And of course, 
he was 36. So right before my 40th birthday, he was asking me, how does it feel? You know, it feels the same. After the 40th, it feels the same. He didn't ask me anything about the 70 this time. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, and uh, that's it.